Hey and welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Amani Forrester, author of the book 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. It's available right now on Amazon and it's free to read if you have Kindle Unlimited. We also have a Patreon now for videos and deep dives that might be a little too much for YouTube. Links are in the description. Also, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but many of you are being unsubscribed without your knowledge or consent, so please make sure to check that you're still subscribed and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. I have some articles I've been meaning to discuss for a while now about fathers, and since it's Father's Day, I thought, hey, why not? You know, now is the perfect time. So, as we know, society, especially men, love hyper-focusing on the age of women. Often this is in the form of guys who talk about women hitting the wall, uh, guys who attempt to scare and rush child-free women into having kids with just about anyone because, you know, each passing year supposedly lessens your chances of having healthy babies. And these talking points are used to manipulate, shame, and devalue women. They're also used to explain why women should quickly settle down and become mothers as young as possible, and to justify why men are, on the other hand, allowed to run around, date, sleep around with women well into their 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, and why it's perfectly natural for them to seek out much younger female partners since, you know, biologically men, quote, desire healthy young women who can birth healthy children, right? Mind you, these are just sayings or beliefs that we grew up hearing or that were birthed out of the manosphere in the past few years. No one ever really pulls any of the scientific research papers on any of this, so we all take these concepts as truth without factual data. That's why when I found these articles, which I have been collecting for like a few months now, I knew that I wanted to share them with the community because they say the exact opposite, basically of what we've heard a lot. So I know a lot of you are 4B or you're not really interested in dating right now or having children, which is fine and awesome. You can still listen for the education, but for my ladies who do want children with men someday, you may want to take some notes because it gets very interesting. Now I'll leave the articles in the description as well. And if you appreciate my work, you can always support me by purchasing my book or buying me a coffee. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and let's get into today's articles. I'm not going to read through all of them in their entirety because I don't want this to take too, too long. But I do want you to get the point. So, yeah, let's just jump right in. So the first article is from NewScientist.com. It was written in 2017, and it's called Old Fathers Pass on More Mutations to Kids Than Old Mothers. And then it reads, older fathers pass on more genetic mutations to their children than mothers than older mothers do, according to studies that investigated the genomes of thousands of Icelandic parents and children. The researchers behind the work hope to understand how such mutations put children at risk of rare diseases. New mutations are genetic alterations that appear for the first time in eggs rather than being carried for generations. They are key drivers for evolution, but some can be harmful. And then Kari Stephenson of um, Deco Genetics, a genetic company in Iceland, says, An extraordinarily large percentage of rare diseases in children are rooted in mutations that are not found in their parents. It's, impo it's important to figure out where these mutations are coming from. To find out, Stephenson and his colleagues sequenced the genomes of 14,688 Icelanders. The team used two different approaches that involved comparing the genome sequences of individuals with those of their parents, children, and siblings. If a sequence is not present in the parents, but is present in the child, then it's new. They discovered that 80% of new mutations come from the father, and that the number of mutations increases in line with the age of the parents. And then they said that it makes sense that age affects the sex cells of men more than women. Women are thought to be born with all the eggs that they'll ever have, Although these cells age, they are not thought to divide. Men, on the other hand, are continually making sperm, and every cell division carries a risk of creating a new genetic mutation. These mutations won't all be harmful. We're all born with at least 70 new mutations, and most of them don't affect the way our bodies work. Or our brains. <laughs> our bodies are brains. Um, the vast majority of mutations don't matter. There might be the occasional mutation that is deleterious, or extremely occasional mutation that is beneficial. He compares the impact of mutations to swinging a hammer at a car engine. 
There's a chance you will improve its function, but it's much more likely that the hammer is going to either bounce off or break something. Other research has shown that older fathers are more likely to have children with autism and schizophrenia. And I'm going to get into more of that in another article, so just hang on now. So this article comes out of Stanford, and it says older fathers associated with increased birth risks. It says from the data of more than 40 million births, scientists at Stanford have linked parental age to birth risks and even risks to the mother's health. So that's important for anybody who wants to have children. Um, you are risking not only the child's health, but your own if you partner with older men. So a decade of data documenting live births in the United States links babies of older fathers with a variety of increased risks at birth, including low birth weight and seizures. According to a new study at the Stanford University School of Medicine, the data even suggests that the age of the father can sway the health of the mother during pregnancy, specifically her risk of developing diabetes. We tend to look at maternal factors in evaluating associated birth risks, but this study shows that having a healthy baby is a team sport and that the father's age contributes to the baby's health too, says Michael Eisenberg, MD Associate Professor of Urology. Data from more than 40 million births show that babies born to fathers of an advanced parental age, which roughly equates to like older than 35, were at a higher risk for adverse birth outcomes, such as low birth weight, seizures, and a need for ventilation immediately after birth. Generally speaking, the older a father's age, the greater the risk. For example, men who are 45 or older were 14% more likely to have a child born prematurely, and men 50 or older were 28% more likely to have a child that required admission to the neonatal intensive care unit. So back in 2017, um, his team noticed that like older fathers were on the rise and more and more men were having uh, children you know, over the age of 35 and 40. And they said, we're seeing these shifts across the United States, across race, education levels, geography. Everywhere you look, the same patterns are being seen. So I do think it's becoming more relevant for us to understand the health ramifications of advanced parental age on infant and maternal health. The data suggested that once a dad hits age 35, there's a slight increase in birth risks overall, with every year that a man ages. He accumulates on average two new mutations in the DNA of his sperm. Now, there's also a research paper from 2018. Um, it was an experimental demonstration that offspring fathered by old males have shorter telomeres and reduced lifespans. They studied this in animals primarily. They weren't really sure if it also correlated to like humans. Like they're not really sure. But I mean, I think that's just something to keep in mind as well. And again, I'll leave this article in the description. I just thought it was interesting and disturbing. It makes sense. Like the more genetic defects that one has would increase your risk of having like a reduced quality of life, reduced, you know, overall life, I'd assume. But, um, but yeah, I'll leave this article here. And there's one more article that I wanted to show you. And we're going to go through that one in a little more detail. It's about the children who are fathered by older dads tend to be facially less attractive. So if you want cute children, well, ladies, you might want to look at the age of your partner because that can affect how cute your kid is. It sounds super shallow, but it, it's interesting that they actually did a study on this. So let's jump into that article too. So I don't want this to be too long. So we really are going to skip around this article, but let's just get into it. So it says, in recent years, growing evidence shows that advanced parental age at conception is linked with increased risk of a wide range of neuropsychiatric disorders, including schizophrenia, autism disorder, epilepsy, bipolar disorder, as well as um, physical health. Higher parental age also predicts lower in intelligence and a higher risk of obesity. This association of higher risk for disease and paternal but not maternal age is explained by the fact that women are born with their full supply of eggs, whereas men continue with sperm production throughout reproductive life. In the egg, all cell divisions are complete before birth, whereas the number of cell divisions and chromosome replications that sperm cells have gone through increase with age. So again, it's kind of what we read at the beginning. Um, you know, as men's sperm ages and the more that they age, they replicate. And with every replication, there's a chance for mutation. We've, we've been through that already. Um, so accordingly, it was demonstrated that a much higher number of mutations are transmitted by the father than the mother to their children. 
and that it is the age of the father which explains nearly all of the new mutations in a child. A vast body of work has been published about cues, preferences, and significance of facial attractiveness. Only little is known, however, about whether facial attractiveness has a genetic basis, yet two very recent papers showed heritable genetic influences on facial attractiveness. We would expect that facial attractiveness is sensitive to mutations, and we therefore predict that facial attractiveness should decline with parental age at conception. We analyzed the association of an individual father's age at birth and that individual's facial attractiveness controlling for sex, age, as well as the mother's age. So they're just explaining how they did their experimentation. So the result was that the subject's facial attractiveness decreased significantly more strongly with the increasing father's age at subject's birth than with the increasing mother's age at subject's birth. And then it continues on. But yeah, I just found that to be very interesting. Um, you know, pretty privilege is a thing in this world. It's, it's a currency. So if you want to give your kid the best shot at life in terms of their mental health, physical health, outward beauty... Don't listen to these guys who say, hey, you've got to settle down in your early 20s. You hit the wall at 30. But as for me, I get to go around when I'm 35, 40, 50, and 60. Uh, and I'll settle down when I need a nurse with a purse um, and have children then. Don't listen to them. They will subject you potentially to children who are unhealthy. You know, why Why? Do that to your children, to your future children. Why not give them the best shot at life by having a spry, healthy, young father <laughs> and um, and then enjoy, you know, your prime together and enjoy um, healthy children together. You're more likely to do that with a, with a healthy, young father. So, um, yeah, these guys who are in the streets <laughs> running around, leave them there. Do not have kids with them. Science says don't have kids with them. Anyways, I hope you found this video to be educational, um, interesting at the very least. And like I said, I'll leave all the articles. You can read them thoroughly if you want to. This is not my words. This is the words of scientists who have done actual studies. So we don't have to listen to this whole, like, women hit the walls nonsense. It's not the women you have to worry about, guys. It's that sperm. Anyways... Thanks for watching. Happy Father's Day to all the good fathers out there and to all the women who are mothers and fathers to their children. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more.